Welcome into a new analysis video. Brian, it's been a minute since we've done one of these. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to that season opener. I, I think there is this point of the preseason where we're a little bit sick of doing interviews because we want to cover an actual football game. And so these coaches and players have to be getting sick of it as well. But Carl Durrell showed up down in Denver at the Blake Street Tavern yesterday, and I thought that was a pretty good session with him. Yeah, I thought it was really good as well. I mean, he... I know it was probably tough for him. It was originally supposed to be a day off for the Buffs, and they wound up changing their schedule so that they had practice and he had to leave early. I know he probably didn't like that part of it, but uh, you know it was, it was good to see him. You know, I like getting those guys in that more relaxed setting than mm -hmm. just you know right off the practice field. And so it was good sitting down with Darrell and and uh, and doing that. But um, yeah, I thought it was you know good. You know, a lot of the coaches from around the state were were there, but. CU's not really playing any of them other than UNC. Um, I had a chance to chat with Ed McCaffrey a little bit, and but he doesn't give up a whole lot. Um, you know, they're trying to be as secretive as possible. So, uh, but yeah, it was good. It was good with Darrell. One of the interesting takeaways I had is Carl Durrell has been honest about the transfer portal, and it's clear from his responses that he doesn't really think this is a good thing for college football. It's clear that he's the type of coach that would love to just focus on high school recruiting, get these players in, mm -hmm. develop them for three or four years, but you also can realize, and, and you've seen it with what they did this past offseason, it's a necessary evil. They've got to play that game along with everybody else because that's the only way you're going to be able to cultivate depth within your program. Yeah, and I, you know, honestly, I give him credit uh, for recognizing that um, because I think, you know, I don't remember when he said it, but I remember him saying that, that he wants to build, it was early in his tenure, and mm -hmm. I don't remember if it was you know, right away or, you know, when it was. But I remember him saying that he wants to build this program off of high school talent. And then, you know, but they've recognized that you can't just do that. And, you know, for, for Carl Durrell, he's, he's still newish to college football. And uh, it didn't take him long to recognize that, hey, I can't just do high school talent. And, uh, you know, they, they're going to hit the portal. I mean, that's going to be a thing for them. And I think that that's just a new aspect of it that uh, maybe he didn't uh, recognize how big it was when he first got here, but certainly does now. And I think they're going to be very active in that. And I I would disagree with you a little bit. Like I'm not sure if he doesn't think it's good for college football. I think that's, I think there's some aspects of it that he thinks is good for college football. I think he knows that they can build some depth and, and fill some immediate needs through it. Um, he clearly does not like the fact that you know kids can pra uh, can transfer from Pac-12 to Pac-12, mm -hmm. you know, and within the conference because, and, and I, I understand that to a point, um, you know, because out of conference, you, you know, the coaches aren't don't have the access to your players, right? But, you know, Carl Durrell's point is, you know, we could be playing, you know, some team in the Pac-12 and afterwards the coach walks up and says, hey, good game. By the way, <laughs> you know, if you're not playing much here, give me a call. Yeah. You know, and that's, that type of stuff could happen. Who knows? Um, we'll see. And with social media now, you don't even need that handshake on the field, though. It's kind of like people talk about NBA yeah. free agency and, and criticize these teams for tampering. I just don't think there's any way you're really going to get around that. You know, with Mason Faulkner leaving the basketball yeah. program, you know he knew he could go to Louisville or he's not leaving here, right? Yeah, and I think that there's so many I, – I do think Carl, uh, you know, has – he has that view of it, and I think there's there's some validity to it. But these guys know each other so well. I mean, these guys know each other through camps or through high school, things mm -hmm. like that. These guys have friends on teams all over the place that it doesn't necessarily, like you're saying, you don't necessarily need that head coach from the other team to kind of get in your ear. All it takes is – getting your friend that's over at Oregon State or over over at Washington and say, hey, you know, we yeah. need a receiver and would you want to come here? So that's all it takes. Yeah. We've done quite a few interviews since our last video as well. I had a chance on Monday to talk to a couple guys I feel have had a really good preseason based on everything I've heard. One of them is Deion Smith. We've talked about him. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not envisioning he's going to be a thousand yard running back this year, but this was a uh, this is a very talented back, a guy that yeah. would have played more football here if not for the torn ACL he suffered last year. Yeah, you know it's a, it's unfortunate for him. I mean, there's a lot of talk of Alex Fontenot being back, but Deion Smith is back too, and uh, that's all of a sudden that makes that running back room. You think about last year, uh, you know, with with Broussard, you had Jaron Mangum here last year who you know didn't have the year he had the year before, and Ashad Clayton's a freshman. Um, you didn't have Alex Fontenot or Deion Smith. If you have both those guys last year, it's a whole different running game. And now you have both of them this year. I think Deion. He has shown some flashes in the past, and I'm excited to see what he does this year because I think he's not going to get a ton of carries. I think when he gets some carries, he can be pretty exciting to watch. And we've both talked to Jalen Sami this preseason. He yeah. was another guy I talked to on Monday. This is a guy that when the shutdown happened, he went back home and he had to work in a warehouse to help yeah. support his family. And so uh, it's a little bit understandable. He wasn't in the best of shape last year, and that makes sense. He had an ankle injury as well. 
because we were kind of wondering, Jalen Sami, we expected to take a huge jump from 2019, didn't do that, but yeah. now I think he is ready to, to make that big jump. Yeah, and I think he's motivated by that. You know, when I talk to him, it's something that um, he was heavy last year. Um, he's lost a good amount of weight coming into this year. I, I, I saw him at media day, and, and I remarked to him, I'm like, you look like thinner and like more fit. And he goes, I am. And he's down from like 338 last year to about 318, 320 this year. He looks really good. I think he's motivated a little bit by the fact that Janaz Jordan, you know, took his spot last year and that there's a lot of competition there. I mean, you look around that room, Naeem Robbins developing. There's some young guys that are developing. I think he's motivated. I think he's, from what we've heard and just seeing him, he's a much better player than he was last year. I noticed you were talking to Carson Wells. Who else have you been talking to? Lots of guys. I feel like I've, been, I've talked to half the defense this week, but um, Isaiah Lewis, Christian Gonzalez, uh, John Van Deest, uh, you know Carson Wells. So it's a lot of guys on defense, and um, you know I didn't I hadn't even thought about that the defense heavy with my interviews. But man, those guys are excited. They love this defense. They're super excited about what this this uh, defense can do. Carson Wells specifically, um, he is so excited. I asked him about the class load last year. How he was so busy. And then she goes, I'm in, I'm in grad school now. He goes, it's easy. And so, you know, I'm curious to see what he does with a little more free time on his hands. And he's excited. He's working more on his body than he did last year. And uh, he said that offensively, uh, you know, or in practice, they're sliding protection over and uh, double team him a little bit more, some chip blocking. And uh, that's going to help him get prepared for this year because he's, he's going to get more attention from the, from the opposition. He hasn't gotten a lot. We've talked about it. He hasn't gotten a lot of accolades yeah. from you know, awards and things like that. But the opposing coaches know about him, and they're going to give him attention. And so yeah. he's preparing for that. Yeah, he still has. I don't know if you remember when he came in, there was an SI writer that we've never seen around here that wrote a blurb about the fact that he'd have right. a hard time making the team out of spring ball that year. The whole thing was really awkward. Yeah. The last time I checked Carson <laughs> Wells' Twitter, it, that's still like his cover photo on his Twitter account. Yeah, I think he, he gets motivated by that stuff. And I think, you know, he was motivated by the fact that he didn't feel like he played up to his standard the first couple of years here. I mean, he knew that last year he needed to step it up and he had a good off season. Uh, you know, he went through some injuries and maybe didn't play as well as he wanted to early in his career. But, uh, hey, this is a kid that he's not real vocal. You know, he's, he's sort of quiet and he's, um, you know, he's a good interview. I, I like talking to him. Uh, but he's, he's a little bit quieter in interviews. But he's a guy that, tell him he can't do something, and the kid's going to go out and work hard and do it. And we've yeah. seen that. I had a chance to talk to Makai Blackman today. Yeah. And during my interview with him, Demetrius Martin, his position coach, came up and, and proclaimed that he's the best cover corner in the Pac-12. Uh, so I, I thought it was cool for him. Yeah. And I know this doesn't matter when they get out on the field. Yeah. But he was a second-team all-conference preseason pick. So it was good to see. I think at the end of last year, he was underrated. And now yeah. he's kind of getting some of those accolades that Carson Wells is not. Yeah, I think people are starting to look at I mean, he was graded pretty high by pro football focus last year. People are starting to look at that. Uh, you know, And I think Christian's going to – surpass him at some point um, but I think that if that happens that just means this corner group is so much better I think Makai is in for a better year uh, when I talk to him at media day as well um, he's put on some weight and some good weight and he feels stronger like he can uh, handle some blocks and tackles and things like that a little bit better so I'm interested to see if both those guys are better than they were last year this is gonna be a good corner group the other guy I talked to is Jay Lee Stacks who is uh, gonna be in that utility role I've been excited to watch him out there just I like yeah old school football because everything's now spread dink and dunk i like the fact that they have they're gonna have some packages for it us to kind of have a little bit of a throwback and i was talking to jay lee and he said that he's always been bigger than his peers and when he started playing football you know there's some leagues they put the the patch on your helmet if you're too big and you can't touch the ball if that's the case (laughs) he went and found a league where they didn't do that so that he could get out there and get physical uh, see, I, I love stories like that, and, and I'm excited to see Jaylee as well because we do focus a lot on Jerry Broussard, Alex Fontenot, and Shad Clayton. Uh, Jaylee Sachs is one that uh, he's going to have a role in this team, and he may touch the ball ten times throughout the season, but they might be ten impactful carries yeah. that uh, take you from third and one, you know, to a first down, move the chains, or they get you in the end zone at the end. So, uh, and maybe they throw the ball to him. I mean, he's got good hands as well. Yeah. Any other takeaways from your interviews before we wrap this up? Uh, today, you know, I talked to a couple guys that have been sort of role players. They've been starters slash role players throughout their career, John Van Deest and, uh, and Jalen Jackson. Uh, Jalen, we know, you're in all-conference honors for special teams. And uh, it, it's amazing to me, you know, we talk about the growth of this program. Those are a couple of guys that maybe five years ago, they have to be starters in your program, right, with that talent level. Or uh, now there's so much talent there that, you know, 
John Van Dees and uh, Jalen Jackson are sort of role players on offense and offensive defense in their positions. That that speaks to me about the depth and the strength of this program. It's getting a lot better. I mean, John talked about um, at linebacker, they can go six to eight deep now where they feel comfortable, and who knows what the rotation will look like. But uh, and then at receiver, the same thing. You know, Jalen's caught some passes, but you know, with so much talent there, they don't need him to catch a lot of passes. And when he does, he's kind of made some impactful catches. Yeah. Uh, but he's also been a really impactful special teams uh, player. So I love guys like that. That they're going to be role players and they're key players on this team. Not necessarily the stars, but there's some key players on this team. And any guy that makes big plays against Nebraska kind of holds himself uh, in a special yeah. plate of, place of CU fans' hearts. And he did that a couple years ago. Yeah, he did. And, and, and CSU, I mean, remember John Van Dees with the sack? Yep. Um, you know, the sack and the uh, strip sack, and I think Mustafa scored on Correct. that one. Yep. Uh, so I know it was a blowout at the time, but that's still a huge play that, uh, you know, I know CU fans love replaying that one as well. So both those guys have made impactful plays against rivals. And, you know, that, that's going to put you <laughs> in the heart of CU fans for a long time. All right, we're getting closer and closer to that season opener.